Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Aloha Friday Art. My name is Mazena, and today I'm so excited to introduce our special guest, Lori Walmark. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Edna, for having me on your show. So happy to have you here. I came about to writing on a slightly different path than most people. I was not a writer as a kid. I was a science math kid who loved to read. I wrote some poems, I wrote some songs, and that was it. At the time, I took a picture book workshop, mm -hmm. a, a picture book course at a local community college. And I realized I really like writing picture books. I like having the freedom to choose exactly the right word and exactly the right place where every single word counts because picture books are so short. Uh -huh. Then from there, how I got to writing picture book biographies is, remember, science and math kid? Oh, yes. Yeah. I wanted other kids to share my love or understand my love of science and math. And I thought one way I could do this is by writing about inspiring people who have been scientists and mathematicians. And I wanted to write about women because so few books at the time were written about women scientists and mathematicians. So the book that just came out this year is called Numbers in Motion, Sophie Kovalevsky, Mathematician. I wanted someone whose contributions to math so I went through lists and lists and lists of women mathematicians, and I narrowed it down to Sophie for two reasons. Uh -huh. One, because the math she did was about the rotation of solid bodies. What is a solid body? A planet, a football, a top. These are solid bodies that rotate. So this is something that kids can understand. Uh -huh. But the other reason I chose her is the problem she solved was called the mathematical mermaid. Now, who could resist writing about a mathematical mermaid? Well, the reason it was called a mathematical mermaid, because like the mythical mermaid, every time you got anywhere close to solving it, it just went out of sight, like it didn't even really exist. And so that's what, what she was trying to solve. Like, that's exactly. That was the big problem that she was trying to solve. And she did. So her work yeah. helps us understand things like the rotation of planets, um, other astronomical bodies, or spinning tops. I actually, a few years ago, I got a Master of Fine Arts in Writing for Children and Young Adults. Mm -hmm. And my thesis was how to talk about scientific information in picture book. So I studied many, many different methods of doing it. Oh, okay. But it's still not easy. I tend to think there's not another picture book out there that has the words partial differential equations in the text. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then tell now, us, like, the thesis is a, is that kind of like a long report? Or, yes, you know, the thesis. The okay. thesis is a long report you do before you graduate, in yeah. order to graduate. Um, and then you get up and you present your information to your professors before you can get your degree. So I got a master's degree, which, like a doctorate, but different, is another degree that you can get after you graduate college. Okay. I'd like to give a shout out to my amazing illustrator, Yevgenia Nayberg. And one thing I really like about her illustration is they're almost whimsical. So for kids who might be afraid of math, uh -huh. it makes the book a lot more approachable because you're drawn in by her beautiful illustrations. I have a favorite page. Uh -huh. And what's happening in this page is Sophie is about to receive her doctorate uh -huh. in mathematics. And to receive a doctorate, you have to do original research. So she's very excited. She's worked her whole life to get to this point. She's done the research. She's ready. And then she finds out that someone else had solved the same problem before her. So her work was no longer original research, even though she had done it by herself, uh -huh. but it wasn't enough to get her a doctorate. So of course she was very disappointed. 
So the spread, I'm going to hold it up here. Okay. Shows on one side. Ah. Uh. You have everyone congratulating the man who solved the problem, even though Sophie did solve the same problem. And then on the other side. Okay. Oh, her expression. She does look disappointed. She's giving him the, them the stink eye. Yeah. It's like, really? Aww. Really? Mm -hmm. What she went on to do then, she wasn't going to let that happen again to her. So she did research on three original math problems to get her doctor. Oh, boy. That way, if someone happened to have been doing research on the same problem, she'd still be okay. She so wasn't like going to, yeah, she wasn't going to settle for you know, being upstaged again, right? Right. So I like that spread for two reasons. One, because, you know, it's showing her determination. Mm -hmm. But I also love that expression on her face as she's looking at them, you know, sideways. Like, <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> you feel, you can almost be in her shoes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We've all been there. Yeah. actually fewer women in computer science now than when I entered the field. Oh, it's it gone down, uh -huh. which is just very distressing. But I do have to tell a story from when I was a kid. Oh, yes, I please. Loved, loved math, uh -huh. and I was about to go into high school, and they had a meeting with the parents and the kids going into high school, and my mother asked the principal, what advanced math courses do you offer at the high school? The principal said to her, do you have a son or a daughter? She said, I have a daughter. He said, well, it doesn't matter. She won't take them anyway. That's interesting. So I'd like to believe no principals would actually say that anymore, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid many that might think that. Mm -hmm. After I graduated college, I got a degree in biochemistry. I became a programmer, what's now called a software engineer. And almost always, I was the only woman in any meeting. I, I try to show that math is everywhere too. Yeah, what people oh, absolutely. Math, you know? I mean, the, what, what, there's math going into making this book. Besides the subject, right? You're, you, we're using math in the making of the book. Yeah. The illustrator has to know the size that the book is going to be so that her illustration will fit into the correct size, you know, whether it's going to be a wider book or a, you know, a taller book. Exactly. They have to figure out what size to use for the type in the book, how many pages in the book. Math is just all around us. We just don't think about it. I do want to mention one thing about the back matter in this book. Okay. You know, the back matter is information that comes after the story. Okay. And most biographies have a timeline and maybe some suggested books. In addition, I have more information about those partial differential equations. Okay. Some kids who might want to learn more. But I also have in the back matter information about Sophie's name. Since she was Russian, her name was originally written in the Cyrillic alphabet. Oh, okay. Which is different than the Roman alphabet we use here in the U.S. So when it gets transliterated, it gets transliterated, is it a PH? Is it an F? Things like that. And I found that fascinating. And in talking to teachers, they found it interesting because so many of their students do come from other countries mm -hmm. where their names had to be changed into our alphabet. And it helps show kids how this happens. There's, there's like all these, I guess, layers and layers, like a cake with layers, you know? <laughs> exactly. And that's the great thing about picture books because you've got language, you've got art, you've got the subject matter that you're writing about. Uh -huh. you know, these all can come together and you've got history because I'm writing about historical people, things that were different in that time than our time. All these things can come together. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. And, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you uh -huh. so much for having me, Miss Edna. And bye to everyone who's watching.